Hey everybody, this is Steve at FR Sky, and today we're going to be talking about telemetry logging. Um, telemetry logging is something you have to set up. I have another video on it. Uh, the files are saved onto your SD card. When you turn on telemetry logging, they're saved in a folder called logs. This is one I pulled out. It's called a CSV file or comma separated value file. It's like a text file, but the spreadsheets like uh, Excel or in this example, Google Sheets can read them in and that's what we're looking at. And I, I've gone through and I've highlighted some things. Um, and uh, I'll basically take you through and show you that um, I'll take it to the far right over here. These are all your switches. And as you flip switches, you, everything's recorded as far as your switch placement, your sliders, all your pods, all your um, stick movements, everything's recorded about your flight. And this is very helpful for you to go back and learn more about your flight. Also, it's saved by date and time. As you can see right here, uh, this was particular flight was on November 6th of 2022. Um, you can see that the time entry in the seconds occurred four times in one second. That means every quarter of a second it was writing the file. Um, so uh, what we're going to look at is the information from the receiver. This is called telemetry. In order to get this, you actually have to do what's called the discover sensors. Um, so you have to go in under telemetry under the model, main model setup. It's on the second page. You'll find uh, icon that says telemetry and ethos. Click on that and you would just uh, turn on discover all sensors or you might have to delete them first, the old ones, and then do discover all sensors again and it will populate and all this information will be saved on your radio. Um, okay, now with all that being said, uh, I wanted to kind of give you a sense of what's normal and what's not normal. This flight was somewhat not normal is because um, my entire flight, the VFR, which stands for valid frame rates, didn't really drop below 96 on 900 megahertz, which meant that um, it was getting 96 out of every 100 packets sent from the transmitter to the receiver. Uh, the plane can still fly yeah, with about 50 packets or somewhere even in the 40 packets. When you get below 40, we start to get worried because you're not, when you start losing six out of 10 packets, it's not a very good sign. Um, but I did want to point out um, a couple things here about the flight. This particular plane has one of our FR Sky um, ESCs on it and I want to point out right here, as you can see, it went from zero. Yeah, I'll move this over a little closer. It went from zero all the way to uh, 16 amps. So obviously, this much power ramp up in such a short period of time, this was the takeoff. Um, and I wanted to point this out because this is one of the first things I will mention. And this is the RSSI. It measures the amount of decibels. Um, you know, 100 decibels here, and then all of a sudden, within a period of five seconds, it went down to 62 decibels. And it looks like, oh my gosh, there's a problem with the receiver. And that's why you kind of have to look at the stuff after a while and kind of just look at um, the data on planes that are flying well. So you kind of get a good feeling as to what. Uh, a good flight looks like and what the data looks like. This is actually very normal. Um, it may look like, oh my gosh, it's getting half the amount of signal that it did just a few seconds earlier. Well, yeah, because you're flying away. Obviously, at this particular point, I was flying away from the transmitter and um, this drops very drastically at 900 megahertz. But if you keep scrolling down, you'll see that it was... Yeah, pretty much between 50 and 60 the entire time. There are a couple 40s right there in red. But for the most part, it was yellows and blues for everything, and it was fairly consistent. Um, 
And if we go back and look at this again, this was, I believe, around number right here. Okay, you'll see that uh, on 2.4 gigahertz, it was at 100. And as I took off, when this got down to 53, this was at 74. And you're like, wow, obviously the 900 megahertz signal is doing better. And then you look at it, and look at that drop below 50 right there. And you'll find that you get patches where it's below 50 and I saw some here that are red which meant that it was right there look at this 31 27 this is when you get down to here it's starting to get towards the edge of the band where all of a sudden the packets from 900 megahertz are filling in or if I just had a 2.4 gigahertz receiver uh, I might be hearing things like uh, low RSSI warning, I'm getting too far away. Um, and you can see that it, it occurred for what looks to be one second right there, because there's four of these. Um, and most likely what happened was just the way that the plane was turning and perhaps there, there could have been a battery that blocked the signal of the receiver and I got in between the receiver and the radio, uh, that battery, and that could block the signal. And so simple things like that could do it. And also, as things turn, a uh, plane turns, uh, it's going to drop. Um, this will be reflecting lower values because uh, it's not receiving as well. For it to receive well, it pretty much has to be in the same plane as the signal coming from the transmitter. Anyway, with all that in mind, we're looking at this flight and I'm gonna take you to the bottom here and I wanted to show you just kind of a wrap up of what this looked like. Um, pay no attention to the colors of these things, they mean nothing. So on 2.4 gigahertz, the average was around, 60 db and on 900 megahertz the average is around 55 db and if you're you know looking at it at you know quick glance you'd say well obviously the 2.4 gigahertz signal was stronger the reality is, is that the 900 megahertz signal fluctuated less the standard deviation was smaller on 900 megahertz than it was on 2.4 uh, gigahertz and this is actually really good for a flight. I've seen this value be considerably higher than this, two to three times difference. So um, anyway, you, what you're looking at is a flight. I consider this to be a good flight. And I would also say don't get too hung up on these values as far as RSSI. I would spend more time focusing on these values as far as valid frame rates. And you can see that when you look at these, um, it, you know, a couple times they drop down the 80s. Um, and I have a lot of flights where they drop in the 60s or 50s or even in the 40s on 2.4 gigahertz. And 900 megahertz might drop down in the 50s or 60s as far as. Uh, valid frame rates as well um, so you know um, when you have a problem is I'd say when you have consistently low numbers on 900 megahertz when they're consistently showing up valid frame rates are showing up in the 50s and 60s pretty much for the entire flight that means your 900 megahertz antenna is not working quite well and you might need to have that looked at. Um, the 2.4 gigahertz antenna, I tell you, it is a strange thing. It is, It will fluctuate like crazy. You'll see in the flights where it is, you know, you, you fly close to you and it's going to be, the signal is going to be close to 100 or you'll, your RSSI will be close to 100. And then you go not too far away from where you're flying and all of a sudden you're down in the 20s and it makes no rhyme or reason whatsoever and that's the way i find 2.4 gigahertz to be it 
can fluctuate quite considerably. Uh, but I find that the 900 megahertz tends to pretty much stick around for, uh, it stays a lot more constant for the duration of the flight. And if you have wildly varying 900 megahertz VFR or valid frame rates, then that might be an indication of a problem especially if you're not flying that far away. So I'm just trying to clue you in as to some of the things to look for on these telemetry logs. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'm Steve at frsky.com. Thanks for watching.